without further ado, Josh is going to teach us how to build a to-do list app in less than 10 minutes. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to How to Build Day. I'll start us off with a lesson that I recorded that introduces the basics of Bubble, how to build a fully functional to-do list app in 10 minutes. You'll see me walk through the design of the application, the data that powers it, and the logic that connects it all together. This is a simple project and it isn't polished at all, but the point of this lesson is to show how far you can go in just 10 minutes using Bubble. Hello everyone. We're going to build a simple to-do application in Bubble. It's a great way to get started with Bubble because it shows off a lot of Bubble's core features. Right now, we're looking at the design tab of Bubble. This is where you build your user interfaces. But to start with, we're actually going to move over to the data tab. The data tab is where you define Bubble's database. So Bubble comes with one built-in type, user, but we need to add a second type to track to-dos. So I'm going to create a new type called to-do, and then let's add a couple fields to each to-do. The first thing we need to add is a content field to track the content of the to-do. For instance, this would be empty the dishwasher. We're going to say that this is a field of type of text. We also need to create a field to track whether or not the to-do is done or not. This is going to be a yes or no field because the to-do is either done or not done. We've just created a very simple data schema to track all your to-do information. Now let's create a few sample to-dos. So going from data types to app data, we can actually create some real data. This is a list of all our current to-dos, which is currently empty. I'm going to create a handful and I'm not going to be super creative here. I'm just going to call it to-do one, to-do two, and to-do three, which should be enough to get us started. Now that we've created some data, let's build a user interface to display. So going back to the design tab, I'm going to start by creating a repeating group, which is the way we create lists in Bubble, because I want to create a list of all our to-dos. So drawing the repeating group onto the page, this lets us specify what gets displayed in the list. The type of content we want to display in the list is to-do. And for the data source, to get a list of to-dos, we're going to search the database. We're going to search for to-dos, and for now, we're just going to display all of them. We're not going to add any constraints. So I'm going to close this. And then the next thing we need to do is customize each cell of the repeating group. The first cell is a template. Whatever we put in that cell gets copied to the other ones. So I'm going to start by drawing some text into that repeating group cell. And in that text, I'm going to have it display the current cells to do, because it's going to be different from every cell in the list, and have it pick the content of that cell. The other thing I want to display is a little icon that indicates whether or not the to-do is done or not. So I'm going to go to an icon. I'm also going to draw that into the cell of the repeating group. So let's pick an icon for a non-finished to-do. Um, let's make this an open circle. We can use that and set it to red to indicate that the to-do hasn't been completed yet. But if the to-do is completed, we want to show a green checkbox. So let's go to the conditional tab, which allows you to add some conditional display logic. So I'm going to define another condition and say, when current cells to-do done status is yes, then what we want to do here is change the icon to be checked circle like this and change the icon color to be green. And by clicking this, we can temporarily preview it to see what it looks like. Now you can see the repeating group has copied this for each cell. And when we actually run it, it's going to be populated with the actual to-dos. Let's actually give that a try. So I'm going to click the preview button. And there we go. We have the three to-dos we've created with the red circle indicating they're unchecked. Now let's see if we can make it work to actually not check those to-dos off. So going back to the editor, First of all, I'm going to rename this icon to make it easier to remember. I'm going to call it icon done because it represents the done status of the to-do. Now let's go back to the appearance and click the add workflow button, which is the way we connect logic. The add workflow button takes us over to the workflow tab. And we've created a new workflow that says when icon done is clicked and we can now say what should happen. So let's add an action 
and it should be a data action to make changes to a thing. We want to change the current to do. So the thing to change should be current cells to do. And then the field to change should be the done field. And let's set it to yes. Let's see if that worked. I'm going to refresh the page and try clicking on to do's one and then to do two. And as you can see, we've checked them off. So this is a very basic example of working logic combined with the database, combined with the user interface, all the elements to build a web application. However, we're not done yet. We still want to create a way of letting users create new to-dos. So I'm going to go back to the editor and let's create a header for this application. Scrolling down, I'm going to add a group which could be used to create a header effect. And I want to customize the background of the group so that there's a border along the bottom, but no borders are along the side. So I'm going to define each border independently and set a bottom border to a solid line. I also want to add a logo in the left side of it. Let's call the logo to do app. We can come up with a more creative name. Maybe we should do a little uh, branding, but I think to do app is good enough for now. And let's change the font. Let's pick the heading three style, which will make it look a little bigger. I need to expand that. And then on the other side, let's create a new to do button. Let's add the text new to do. Now, when we click this button, what we want is to open a pop-up that provides a form for entering the text of the new to-do. So I'm going to do that. Let's go to the pop-up. And I'm going to draw this on the page. The pop-up is going to contain two things. It's going to contain a multi-line input. And that multi-line input is going to contain a placeholder that tells you this is where you write the to-do. So write the text of the to-do here. And we need a little save button. And I'm going to say save. Actually, it's called add to-do because it's really creating it. All right, so that's the UI for creating a new to-do, but we actually need to add the logic as well. Let's go to the new to-do button and have it open the pop-up. I'm going to, again, go to the Add Workflow button to take us back to the Workflow tab. And now we have button new to do is clicked. And what we want to do is we want to show that pop-up. So I'm going to search for show, show an element. And the element I want to pick is the, we only have one pop-up, that pop-up. Then the next thing I want to do is go back to the pop-up and add the logic for the Add to Do button. So going back to that pop-up, and going back to the Add to Do button, go to Add a Workflow. And what we want to do here is go to Data Things and create a new thing, create a new to do. So I'm going to set the type to be to do and set the field content. And we want to take whatever the user typed in that multi line input. And actually, let's give that multi line input an easier name. So let's go back to that for a second. Right now it's multi input write the, which is probably not the most helpful. Let's just call this input to do content because that's really what this is. So going back to the workflow tab, we're back to this create a new to do action, content equals, and then let's just search for the name I just gave it, input to do content. And we want to set the value of that input. We want to take the text that the user has typed in. Once we've created the new to do, we want to clear the input so that we can use it again and we want to hide the pop-up. So let's uh, search for the hide action, hide an element, and select our pop-up again. I think this should work, let's give it a test. So going back to the to-do tab, here we go. We have our header to-do app, we have a button for new to-do. I gotta try clicking the button, and let's say um, take out the trash. Let's add another one, clean the laundry. Oh, this isn't showing up because we need to expand the repeating group to allow it to show more than four entries. So I'm going to do that very quickly. Go back to the repeating group and under appearance, there's an option set a fixed number of rows. Let's just turn that off and let's make the minimum height of a row a little smaller actually to make it look a little bit crisper. 
and realign this in the repeating group. And now we see take out the crash and clean the laundry. I'm going to check this off. And as you can see, clean the laundry is now checked. So right here, we have an end-to-end -end totally functional to-do app. Obviously, this is just the tip of the iceberg. So there's a lot more we could do to extend this app's functionality, but we'll save that for another lesson. Thank you. To get things started, I have a question for you, Josh. So as a founder yourself, when do you consider an MVP to be complete and how do you know when you're ready to move on to the next phase? Yeah, so my experience as a founder is you wanna get things in front of your actual users as soon as possible, which usually means when you're a little bit embarrassed by what you've built. As soon as you have something that's at least usable at all, that you could imagine someone sort of completing an end-to-end -end task with, even if it's rough, even if it's bumpy, even if it's not what you envision, I would declare the MVP phase done and enter the feedback and iteration phase with actual people using your, uh, using your software. Amazing, super helpful advice. Um, I noticed that you use a repeating group in this app. So in what situations does it make sense to use a repeating group? You can think of a repeating group as a list. So whenever you have a thing in your application where you're trying to display many of the same thing um, with like a common template, that's when you go to a repeating group. We also have a table element, which can be used for similar situations, but where you need columns as well as rows. Awesome, great. That's really helpful context. Um, we also have a question in the chat about Bubbles documentation. I'm so curious if you have any advice to those who are new to learning Bubble, how you'd recommend they go about using Bubble's documentation? Yeah, great question. Um, different people learn differently in my experience. So we have a variety of ways to get into it. We have full written documentation for people who like to read the manual. Um, other people are very like, video or visually driven. And if you go to bubble.io slash academy, you can see an amazing collection of videos that we've built up over time. We also have interactive lessons that let you sort of click through an app step by step. So I recommend if you know how you like to learn, you gravitate to the, the method that sort of matches your personal learning style. And if you're not sure, try a few and see what seems helpful. Yeah, I love that you mentioned people have different learning styles. We also have another question in the chat about how in the internal team learns Bubble when we are onboarding new employees. So wondering if you could shed a little bit more light on, on that process. That's an awesome question. Um, so the first week of anyone's job at Bubble, they build a sample Bubble app. Um, and some of them have been really fun and really interesting and creative. And then once they've built a sample Bubble app, which can be pretty basic, then we have some advanced things like many employees spend time on our customer support team helping users actually debug issues with their application. Nothing teaches Bubble like helping someone else figure out you know, a problem with the application they've built. So that's how we help get people polished and up to speed on the product. Yeah, I have fond memories of my first week at Bubble building an app. I actually built an app for uh, doggy dating <laughs> um, to connect breeders. Um, that was like a lot of fun and very memorable. Um, we also have a question about APIs. So could you tell us a little bit more about Bubble's API connector? And for those who are you know, wondering about integrations, what does that look like in Bubble? Yeah, so Bubble can connect to pretty much everything out there under the sun. Before you grab the API connector, my recommendation is to actually search for plugins because there's a good chance someone else has already built the API connection you're looking for and you can just click and one button install it. But if there isn't a connection to the API you're looking for already, we have a special plugin called the API connector. That's a no code interface for connecting to any API out there and it'll walk you step by step through putting in the URL for the API and configuring the connection to get data into your application. Awesome, great advice. We also have a question about what is an MVP exactly, a minimum viable product, and hoping that you, Josh, could maybe tell us a little bit more about why you think Bubble is uniquely a great tool to actually build MVPs with. Yeah. So MVP is a term that comes from the startup community. It's around building 
the minimum thing you need in order to start testing your product with real customers and see if you have something that's actually useful to people. So that's sort of the core concept of the MVP. And Bubble is a really cool way of building an MVP because in the old days, you would like use a prototyping tool, design a prototype, get an engineering team, have the engineering team, you know, build out a V1 and then often do painful refactoring to get production ready. Whereas in Bubble, it's a seamless process. The process of building the prototype is the same as building the MVP. And because you're building on top of our platform, it's already production ready. So we collapse all those stages and you can just go off to the races and kickstart whatever you're trying to create. Amazing. Well, that's all the time we have today for Q&A. Josh, thank you so much for kicking off How to Build Day with us.